srdačno vas pozdravljam. St. Jerome's text on the topic of poverty, including larger units that treat it in some extent systematically, are mostly to be found in the, his epistles and homilies within the larger frame of issues that would today be designated as, as those surrounding the sanctified life. In these writings, Jerome either leads his readers on their way to the realization of the gospel ideal of perfection, or he encourages them to embrace it. Finally, he praises those who already achieved it. It is therefore clear uh, that Jerome treats poverty primarily as an element of ascetic monastic spirituality or asceticism. I shall address this topic through seven short points. One, poverty as an element of the gospel ideal of perfection, voluntary poverty. Jerome regularly encourages his readers to embrace poverty by quoting Jesus' words in Matthew 19.21, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor, then come follow me. By following these words, Jerome sees poverty as one of the indivertible and essential elements of the gospel ideal of perfection. To be perfect means to be like Christ, apostles, and the prophets. Two. Gospel poverty is rooted in the event of Christ. It is the following of poor Christ and apostles. Jerome states that embracing voluntary poverty means to follow Christ who was poor. He was already announced by prophet as a poor or lowly man, Zechariah 9.9. <laughs> by referring to 2 Corinthians 8.9, so, though he was rich, yet for your sake he be became poor, Jerome draws the attention of his readers to the event of Christ's incarnation as voluntary kenosis, self-emptying and humbleness. On the basis of Psalm 109, Jerome points out that Christ refers to himself as a pauper and a beggar for whom God himself is taking care. Jerome emphasizes that Jesus was born in poverty and his parents lived from the labor of, the, of their own hands. He did not care for gold and silver. He did not owe a home, but lived from the hospitality and bread other people, even strangers, gave him. He did not, not have the means to pay taxes. He, he believed that charity money belongs to the poor and he did not use it for his personal needs. He was crucified. Jerome identifies Christ's poverty with his <coughs> humbleness, and this identification reaches its peak in the event of the cross. I quote, Christ is a pauper. Let us blush with shame. Christ is lowly. Let us be ashamed. Christ was crucified. He did not rule. He was crucified in order to rule. He conquered the world, not in pride, but in humility. Let us therefore imitate our Lord, homily 83. Gospel poverty is for Jerome voluntarily accepted poverty for Christ. It is also the way of following and imitating apostles who were already poor even before they became Jesus' disciples. But when they decided to follow him, they renounced everything they owed. Three, gospel poverty in the perspective of the renouncement of property. On the basis of Matthew 19, 21, Jerome invites those who, is, uh, who aspire to perfection to sell all their possessions at, and to give all money to the poor, which is the way of following Christ. He interprets Matthew 19, 21 by emphasizing that one is not allowed to keep any part of possession for oneself. The perfect ones are not allowed to possess anything except Christ, which contributes to adherence to Christ. The answer to the question, what suffices, Jerome finds in the ideal of poverty of apostles. He refers to 1 Timothy 6.8, but if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. 
and interprets these works in the sense of the most immediate everyday need of clothes and sustenance. Everything above has to be given away. In Jerome's opinion, it was precisely in view of the immediate everyday need of clothes and sustenance that Matthew 6.34 ordered not to be concerned for tomorrow or for future. This doesn't mean that one ought not to work for a living, but one ought to always be concerned about is spiritual food and clothes. In view of the demand to renounce possessions, Jerome is aware of the potential fear of his addresses for their own future. He quotes Matthew 6, 24, 26, where Jesus, in Jerome's interpretation, deters from the concern for food and clothes, refuses to identify the sustenance with life, and teaches that people are fed by God's providence. He also invites his readers to accept Job's words, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of Lord be praised. And 1 Timothy 6, 7, for we brought nothing into this world, and we can take nothing out of it. It seems to us that in this context, these quotations can be understood as an attitude of humility that derives from the awareness of natural humilitas of the human being in the sense of his or her lowliness and poverty in which he or she is born and which he or she dies, as well of his or her complete dependence of, on God as the source of his or her entire existence. By quoting Luke 12, 31, but seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. And Psalm 37, 25, I was young and now I'm old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children being uh, begging bread. Jerome is arguing that the Lord will not allow the righteous, uh, namely the one who being holy lives in voluntary poverty and gives alms, that he dies of hunger. One could therefore say that uh, by embracing the life of perfection uh, through renunciation of all property, the person, according to Jerome, also embraces the real material poverty. It does not necessarily entail extreme scarcity uh, of sustenance, but it does count on God's providence in immediate needs which also acts through the help of brothers and sisters in faith, according to Acts 4, 34 to 37. Four, gospel poverty in the perspective of the work of mercy. Jerome presents the demand of giving to the poor what one gets after selling all possessions, specified in Matthew 19, 21, as an unavoidable part of the life of perfection, and as in service to virtue. He argues that Christ himself did so. According to Jerome, by renouncing all property, the person gives it or offers it to Christ to whom it belongs from the moment of vowing to perfection. And consequently, it belongs to the poor. It seems that Jerome presupposes a certain presence of Christ or presence of God in the poor who are those living stones from 1 Peter 2.5, from which, according to Revelation 21.10, the new Jerusalem, the city of the great king, is being built. According to Jerome, Christ identifies himself with the poor. He is naked, hungry, without home, asking for alms, and it is him who dies in poor persons. By serving the poor, we are serving Christ, Furthermore, Christ is merciful, and we ought to imitate him in this. Offer to Christ personal property for Jerome, perhaps for the first time truly to the, uh, belongs to person who offered it. Because by freeing himself or herself from being a slave to it, he or she gives wealth as its master. Commentary in Matthew. Renouncing possessions and giving it to the poor in the form of charity, Jerome considers as an attentive stewardship 
of wealth that has, that has to be understood as returning the received gift back to Christ. One has to give in faith and in holiness for Christ for the glory of God because, I quote, virtues differ in accordance with the motive and nature of the person performing the act, homilies 46. This awareness is extremely important. Jerome brings up examples of Jews who are giving alms without believing in Christ, pagans who are giving alms in order to receive it back if and when they also need it, and those Christians who do not give it willingly but only in public, or their giving of alms hides the wish for vainglory or avarice in the form of them getting richer themselves. Giving in faith and holiness for Christ and with awareness that one is giving what belongs to Christ allows one to give to those who are in need as if to brothers and not to beggars. This leads to the transformation of our mercy into misericordia such as Christ's. That is, it is then motivated by love which mutually obliges us and by compassion because Christ, I quote, became a poor man with man so that no one might despair of salvation because of his poverty, homily 35. Christ is poor with the poor in order to comfort the poor. He takes pity on his creation and Jerome says that the same uh, says the same for God, who, according to homily on Psalm 98, quote, weeps with the tearful and laughs with the joyous, thirsts with the thirsty, and hungers with the hungry and is naked with the naked. The pure formalism in front of others make a beggar out of brother. Possessions have to be given exclusively to the poor, which is to every needy person who seeks from us. Giving alms should cover what a person's immediate needs are for that day in terms of clothes and food. Next to bread, one also needs to give to a poor person his soul, help him or her in everything one can do, and to console him in his misery. One has to do all this out of compassion and in joy and not out of the necessity because this is the only way to satisfy the poor person's hunger completely and not only partially. The perfect one, the holy ones, who have nothing to give in material sense, give alms by teaching holiness to those who are not holy. holy. Five, to follow Jesus, Matthew 19:21. For Jerome, poverty is not necessarily a good for the soul. He would say that, I quote, poverty can be no recommendation for the poor if in the midst of squalor and want, he fails to keep clear of wrongdoing. He warns that some secular philosophers, heterodox Ebionites and many others, also renounce wealth willingly. Hence, he points out Jesus' words in Matthew 19, 21, that set another demand after selling one's possessions and giving the money to the poor of following him. This is precisely what is characteristic of apostles and Christians, commentary in Matthew. According to Jerome, to follow Christ means to imitate him and to follow in his footsteps, to renounce evil, and do good, which is to renounce sins and make friends with virtues, to imitate Christ who came to serve and not to be served. Six, the renunciation of property within the frame of the complete demand of renunciation. It is clear that the demand to follow Jesus, according to Jerome, has further demands of perfection attached to it. He constantly points out that the gospel idea of perfection demands more than material, external renunciation in order to make sure that one's interior has not been, quote, left to the devil. One also needs to offer one's free will, his soul, his body through ascetic practice, and even oneself, one's life, and finally everything to Christ. This is precisely what apostles did. 
Although in this perspective, Jerome's demand for the renunciation of material possessions seems meager, Jerome says that this demand is for beginners, it is nevertheless inseparable from other elements of the ideal of perfection, which one can conclude takes hold of the person in his or her totality. The virtuous crowning height, according to Jerome, includes total renunciation. And this is expressed in Jerome's words that one ought to follow naked, the naked Christ or the naked cross of the na or the naked virtue. Seven and last, poverty of the spirit. In his letter to Paulino, Jerome speaks about a change in the disposition of the soul that follows the embracing of true poverty by accepting Jesus' call pointed out in Matthew 19.21. The change manifests itself as the poverty of the spirit that follows material poverty. Jerome identifies poverty of the spirit with humbleness, which is meekness of the heart that Jesus invites us to adopt following his own example in Matthew 11, 29. To be of a humble heart means, quote, not to boost oneself in pride, nor to act humble in order to attain vainglory, but to bend down with the whole heart, commentary in Daniel. According to Jerome, poverty pre preached by Jesus in Matthew 5, 3, where he calls the poor or the meek blessed, is precisely poverty of the spirit. This is voluntary poverty that one embraces for the sake of the Holy Spirit and not poverty that one suffers out of necessity. It has to be understood as humble, humbleness and not as scarcity. Voluntary lived poverty for Christ carried without sin, Jerome sin sees as martyrdom. It is not, not reducible to its economic aspect, although <coughs> this aspect is necessarily included. Its essence is the disposition of complete humbleness with which is identified and which is radicalized in lived material poverty. As poverty of the spirit, it constitutes following in faith, humble and poor Christ who came to serve and not to be served. Understood in this way, it seems that poverty in totality of its demands can only be lived within the frame of the monastic vocation. Thank you very much.